The winds, it has an increase in intensity. That's the good news, and we're not expecting this to. It's still that broad, um, somewhat a little bit more organized, but with it being broad, it's not going to be able to wrap up very quickly. So 50 mile per hour sustained winds, that's probably on the high end. Pressure is down one millibar, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it strengthened a whole lot. It's 65 miles south of New Orleans, and notice they have it right near Grand Isle. Uh, it looks like so they're calling the circulation kind of on the outer side of uh, this broader circulation, which is interesting. So this will continue to lift towards the north, probably getting into the New Orleans Metro by this afternoon. Now this isn't a hurricane, so you know, you don't expect an intense core of winds. You're not going to see an eye wall with this thing. Uh, so being closer to the center could actually be a good thing when we're talking about rain totals, because as I showed you, we were seeing those bands kind of a gap and then more banding of that rain. So that could stay into the Mississippi rather than the New Orleans Metro as this moves to the north. Now that's for tonight. We are going to be watching possibly more flooding potential as we go into uh, your Monday morning. That's as we get those kind of tail end feeder bands. So the latest here you can see there it lifts off towards uh, the north at seven miles per hour, eventually getting into uh, probably near New Orleans as we go later this afternoon. Uh, but of course, you know, you're not expecting an intense uh, eye wall with this or or anything. So our rain totals, the latest on that, it still looks like the North Shore and South Mississippi will pick up the most this afternoon. We're still calling for maybe four to eight inches. And we have seen some locations get close to that four inch mark, but a lot of places still have a long ways to go before they get to this. But this is kind of the zone where we'll be watching for the heaviest rain this afternoon. But as we go into tonight, notice if you look at this graphic, it kind of details what we're going to be watching. See these little tails that kind of hang off here? even up to here towards Alexandra. These are going to be those tail end feeder bands that could move through tomorrow morning. So while we might not see much flooding potential here in New Orleans this afternoon, it may stay just to our north. We're not out of the woods yet and maybe really all of the South Shore because we'll have to watch those tail end bands and see where they set up tomorrow. Where that happens, it's still too soon to say, and I know we've been saying that a lot, but feeder bands are very, very difficult to forecast. I'll show you what one of our models is thinking and see uh, and show you kind of what we'll be watching as we go into tonight and tomorrow morning. Here's the rainfall continuing to push into South Mississippi and the North Shore. This is where we think the flooding threat is going to be highest this afternoon and evening, kind of outside of the center. The center is here right over kind of New Orleans as we go into uh, seven, eight, nine o'clock. Could certainly have gusty winds though. Wouldn't be surprised if we see wind gusts, maybe 45, 50 miles per hour at times, especially right there on the lakefront uh, where you don't have much friction. Now, as we go into the overnight period, here's the center of the storm lifting off to the north. You've kind of got this outer band kind of lifting off to the north. Uh, as well, but still notice we're still getting a surge of moisture up out of the south and a lot of times what will happen, you'll get a little tail on these systems and with that, that's that band, that feeder band we talk about and it could set up anywhere and where it does set up will likely pick up some pretty uh, decent rain totals. This model showing something very similar to what it's been showing, kind of that tail end band setting up through South Mississippi, maybe through the New Orleans Metro down towards Homa. So if this sets up tomorrow morning, notice this is 9, 10 o'clock, we could see the flooding threat kind to linger through tomorrow morning. So that's why we're not saying we're out of the woods yet. We're still going to have to watch this very closely and we still have probably another 24 hours of kind of tracking this thing before we give you the all clear. Even through 11 a.m. Notice it still kind of has that ban through the area. Now it's important to know that there's going to be a sharp gradient with most of this, meaning you could have, you know, 10 inches of rainfall fall underneath this and you go 20, 30 miles to the north, you're looking at maybe two inches. So it's very difficult. Uh, it's just something we'll have to watch and we just need to stay tuned for it really as we go throughout your Monday morning. The storm surge problems are still going to be along the Mississippi coast. We're talking three to five feet, which we're already seeing. We're already seeing over three to five feet along Shell Beach. Like I said, we've had tidal gauges get up over 7.5 feet at the Shell Beach location, which is right here. Not surprising because what happens, of course, you get all that funneling and then you get that funneling into Lake Bourne here and the water has nowhere to go but up. So you see impressive totals. Same thing as you go into the Bay of St. Louis and of course the lake one to three feet, three feet probably on the south shore now because we're seeing more of that northeasterly wind, but you could see more of a northerly wind as that storm moves through later tonight. Of course, the Mississippi River, not really worried about it. It could see a little bit of a crest later on, but your seven day forecast. Once we get past tomorrow and the flooding threat ends, maybe a few showers and storms Tuesday and Wednesday, much drier into the latter part of the week, but boy, it is going to stay hot, the lower 90s. All right.